Welcome to day three of our daily scripture reading. Today we're going to be reading from Genesis, the entire second chapter of Genesis. And we're also going to be reading from the book of Jubilees, chapter 3, verses 1 to 16. So let's get right into this, basically picking up where we left off yesterday. Genesis chapter 2. The heavens and the earth and all their vast array were finished. On the seventh day God finished his work which he had done, And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because he rested in it from all his work of creation which he had done. Now, the seventh day is really our Saturday. Now, as we spoke of yesterday, the biblical days begin the evening, actually be the evening before. So really, biblically speaking, the seventh day, or the Sabbath day, begins Friday evening and lasts until Saturday evening. And we see that it's very specific here. The Sabbath is the seventh day. Not the first day, the seventh day. So let's continue here. This is the history of the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that Yahuwah, God, made the earth and the heavens. No plant of the field was yet up in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For Yahuwah, God, had not caused it to rain on the earth. There was not a man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Stop right there. That mist is, that's basically uh, like a dew. Uh, So the earth uh, did not receive any rain at this period of time, but it was just like a heavy dew that that settled upon the earth and um, was like a mist, as it says. Verse 7, Yahuwah God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Very interesting here. God formed the man from the ground, from the dust of the earth. And it says he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now, that does not literally mean that God, uh, you know, got down and breathed into the the nose of Adam. No, this is a figure of speech, which basically says that God breathed, it gave Adam the breath of life, gave Adam a spirit brought Adam to life. You know, okay, this is like resurrection power, uh, taking a dead corpse and bringing it to life, breathing its breath into its nostrils, so to speak. And the man became a living soul. Yahuwah God planted an, a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the, the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, Yahuwah God made every tree to grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it was parted and became the source of four rivers. The name of the first was Pishon. It flows through the whole land of Chavilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Delium and onyx stone are also there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the same river that flows through the whole land of Cush. The land of Cush is modern-day Ethiopia. The name of the third river is Chedekel. This is the one which flows in front of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Yahuwah God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. Yahuwah commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat of it you will surely die. Let me stop there for a second. Now, if you remember yesterday, there I mean, yesterday we talked about how God created and set up the garden, you know, on a certain day. And and I, you know, if you haven't watched yesterday's uh, video, please do watch that. Very interesting how and when the uh, the Garden of Eden was actually formed. 
And here too also, Yahuwah God commanded the man, saying, you may, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, again, please go back and watch um, uh, a previous video called, you know, Hath God Said, like Satan's Deception. I did a whole video about this command and about how uh, Satan tempted Eve and how uh, the, whole, the whole thing went down. Something I'm, I'm sure you've never heard of before. Verse 18, Yahuwah God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper comparable to him. Okay, now let's just stop here for a second. Now, here is a very, very important point. God made the man first. You know, as it says in, uh, in the letters of Paul, he made it very, very clear. There was a purpose in God making man first. Okay, okay. God is not these like a liberal minded person today that was everybody's, you know, everybody's absolutely completely equal. If that were the case, God would have made them both at the same time, both from the same ground, like both in the same level, so to speak. He did not do that. He would have spoken to both of them at the same time as a, as a team. He did not do that. Okay. He made man first. He gave man the commandment. Now there's a reason why he gave man the commandment. Then later on, he said, okay, now I'm going to make a, a, a helper for him. Okay, so the reason he gave man the commandment, the masculine gender reflects his, God's own authority and his own person. You know, as Yeshua, as Jesus said, you know, when you pray, say father. Okay, he didn't say say mother, although I'm sure, you know, the father has some motherly qualities, just like any father would. Okay, but uh, you know, Yeshua, Jesus, when he talked even about the Spirit of God, he called the Spirit of God He, okay? He said he, when He comes, the Spirit of truth, okay? So the man is a representation. God made man in His image. He gave man the commandment because it was man's place and man's purpose to be the one to bear the responsibility of that commandment and to, and to enforce that commandment, okay? He didn't give that responsibility and that job to the woman. He gave it to the man. Very, very important point here. You need to understand what the scriptures actually say here. So after God made the man, he gave him the commandment. He gave him the commandment. Now, he could have waited until later to, get, to give both Adam and Eve, or he could have actually made Adam and Eve together. Uh, you know, from the same mold, but he didn't. He made them separately, two distinct genders for a purpose. Sometimes I say, you know, if God were a liberal, uh, he would make a unisex race, and he would just he would just create it so that everybody could could reproduce with anybody. You know, like the the way these liberals talk anymore. I think that that's basically what they would they what they wished that God would have done, but God does not think that think like that that is a very twisted evil way of thinking god made this for a purpose he's a perfect god he knows what he's doing verse 18 here let me scroll this up yahuwah god said it is not good for the man to be alone i will make a helper comparable to him okay down here uh, we see the uh, the footnote here the word comparable meaning suitable for or appropriate for. Okay, so he made, again, the woman for the man, not the man for the woman. And uh, he gave the man the commandments and the responsibility, not the woman. Okay, verse 19, out of the ground, Yahuwah God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Okay, so he said, to, he said to Adam, I want to find a helper. I want to make a helper for you that's suitable for you, that's appropriate for you. So then he brought all the animals. Okay, why did he bring all the animals? Well, maybe he was trying to prove to Adam something. Maybe he was trying to prove to Adam, see, none of these animals would do. We're not looking for, I mean, he brought all the animals to Adam, and Adam named every one of them. 
whatever the, whatever the man called every living creature became its name. The man gave names to all, to all livestock and to the birds of the sky and to every animal of the field. But for man, there was not found a helper comparable to him or suitable for him. Yahuwah God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And as he slept, as he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Yahuwah God made a woman from the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Here we've got and we'll see this through the whole entire scope of Scripture. We've got a picture of the crucifixion of Yeshua. The Scriptures say that Yeshua is the second Adam, or the second man, so to speak. The, or Ben-Adam, the, the son of Adam. He, Adam is kind of like a foreshadow of him. Um, now, it also says in the Scriptures that the believers or the people of Yeshua, the people of Jesus, his own people, his own peculiar people, not, not everybody is the Lord's, okay? The Lord has called and chosen a peculiar people to himself, okay? It says many are called, but few are chosen. God has chosen for himself a very particular people. He's, he's, he doesn't just blanket, throw a blanket over everybody. Say, oh, yeah, everybody. No, no, no. He, 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 he singles out a specific group of people and he makes them holy. What's holy mean? It means separate. He calls them out, calls them out. You know, the word church actually in the Greek, ecclesia, means to be called the called out ones. Okay. Now, if God treated everybody the same, if everybody was all on the same level, if everybody was a child of God, if everybody was, was uh, you know, chosen of God, if everybody was called of God, then there would be nobody that's holy, nobody that's separated from the rest of the world. There'd be nobody that's, that's called out. I mean, because how can you be called out if there's nothing to be called out from? You're called out from, a, from the world, from, the, from worldly people, Okay. So we got Jesus, Yeshua, representing Adam, the second man, representing the first man. Adam being like a shadow or a parable or a parallel um, of Yeshua, of Jesus. And we've got the church representing Yeshua's bride, his wife. That's what it says in the scriptures, that the believers that are truly born again, and believe me, <laughs> believe me, not all the people who are believers are truly born again. Not all of them, not everybody that goes to church or everybody that goes to any house of worship for that matter is a, is a child of God. Even if they go to church from birth to death, it doesn't mean they're a child of God. They have to be, re, they have to be born of the Spirit of God. They have to be called and born of the Spirit. They have to receive that nature of God. So, Adam being like Jesus, or Jesus being like Adam, and the church being like the, the bride of Christ. Now, when Yeshua, when, when, when Jesus was crucified, and they took a spear and they thrust it into his side, thrust it into basically where his ribs would be, that was the sign of the, basically the sealing of the covenant, the, the, the sign of sure death, okay? Now it says here that Adam was put to sleep. We also know in the scriptures that sleep and death are synonymous. I mean, sometimes, you know, a lot of times, Jesus uses the word sleep to describe death. Um, so Adam was put to sleep. It was like he died, almost like he was crucified. And out of his side, out of his rib, it says that God opened it up and took out of his rib and out came his bride. In the same way, God caused the spear to be thrust into the side, into the by the you know the rib cage of Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, and and through all of that, out comes His bride. In other words, the believers are sealed and sanctified by the the crucifixion of Christ, 
by the crucifixion of Hamashiach, by the, the death of the Messiah. Um, wonderful parallel here. Wonderful parallel. Now it says here, the man said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Now it also says, you know, in the, in, in the, the letters of Paul, the book of Ephesians, where it says, we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Speaking of Yeshua, speaking of Jesus, we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Just the way this says right here. Okay. This is a picture, a parallel of the crucifixion and the coming forth of the bride of Messiah. She will be called woman because she was taken out of man. Just as the people who have been taken, uh, taken out of Christ are, ca are called Christians. And, um, I hate to use the word Christian because there are so many people that misuse that word. There, I mean, 99.99% .99 of the people who call themselves Christian are not Christian. Uh, sad to say. But anyway, a true Christian is taken from Christ. He is like the woman is taken from the man. Out of man comes woman. Out of Christ comes the true, the true Christian. Out of the Messiah comes the true messianic people. She will be called a woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man will leave his father and his mother and will be joined with his wife, and they will be one flesh. Okay, again, it says this in the scriptures, in the letters of Paul, that we are one with the Lord. We are one with him, just as the, uh, you know, just as the woman and the man here, Adam and Eve, uh, were one in the one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and they were not ashamed. Okay, let me just go back to this verse. He was joined with his wife and they will be one flesh. Okay, so when we are joined with God, we are one with God, you know when Jesus said, when Yeshua said in Matthew 25, he said that many will come to me on the last day, you know, in the day of judgment. And Yeshua will say to him, say to everyone, when you gave the least of these, my brothers, the believers, a glass of water, you gave it to me. When you rejected the least of these, my brothers, you rejected me. You thought you were you were just rejecting the, the you know, the crazy old... Man down the street that was, uh, you know, a fundamental Christian. You thought you rejected him. You thought he was nuts and crazy, whatever else. Well, they said the same thing about Yeshua. You, he would say, you reject him, you reject me. You become one with God when you are really born again. I'm not talking about, you know what? You can go to church, you can speak in tongues, you can do anything. You can do all these things. You can read the Bible, you can go to, you can do all this stuff and still not be born again. When you're born again, you don't, have, you don't have to have anybody tell you you're born again. You know you're born again. When you're born again, even other people don't have to, uh, don't have to look very far to see that you are, they wouldn't use the term born again, maybe necessarily, but you are a brand new creation. You're not like the old self at all. You're completely different than you used to be. Okay, so that's uh, Genesis chapter 2. Let's go to Jubilees chapter 3. And on the sixth day, on, and on the six days of the second week, we brought, according to the word of God, unto Adam all the beasts and all the cattle and all the birds and everything that moves on the earth and everything that moves in the water according to their kinds and according to their types. The beasts on the first day, and the cattle on the second day, the the birds on the third day, and all which uh, all that that which moves on the earth on the fourth day, and that which moves in the water on the fifth day. Now, here we got a lot more detail, obviously, right? So uh, let's go right here. Let's say let's. I just want to focus on here. Um, and on the sixth day, on the sixth days on the sixth day of the second week. Again, we spoke about this in uh, our previous videos, that the word week here is not talking about week of days. This is talking about week of years. So this is basically uh, the second week, 
The first week would have been seven years, so the sixth day of the second week would have been the 13th year of creation. When Adam was alive all that time, you know, and he didn't have a, a wife at that period of time. According to the word of the Lord, unto Adam, all the beasts, all the cattle, all the birds, and everything that moves upon the earth, and everything and everything that moves in the water according to their kinds and according to their types. The beasts on the first day, the cattle on the second day, the birds on the third day, and that and that and all that which was, which moves on the fourth day, and that which moves in the water on the fifth day. So it, it's kind of like um, he goes backward. The last day they they uh, they brought uh, fish and the in the sea creatures to Adam to name it, which it really was the first thing that God created when it comes to the flesh or these kind of animals and these kind of creatures. So the first day, he brings the stuff that was made on the sixth day. I mean, it's kind of backwards here. But very interesting. Okay, let's go on to verse 2. And Adam named them all by their respective names. And as he called them, so was their name. And on these five days, Adam saw all these, male and female, according to every kind that was on the earth. But he was alone. Okay, so God made male and female of all the other kinds. But at that point in time, Adam was alone. Man was alone. There was no, and found no help meet for him, no helper for him. And the Lord said unto us, again, it's the angels speaking here in the book of Jubilees. The Lord, God said to the angels, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make a helpmeet for him. And the Lord our God caused a deep sleep to fall upon him. And he slept. And he took for the woman one rib from amongst his ribs. And this rib was the origin of the woman from amongst his ribs. And he built up the flesh in its stead and built the woman. This is kind of like what, you know, they're kind of doing a little bit of, a little bit of, they're touching on in modern day medical science. I mean, they take, a, you know, a sample of your skin and they, and, and they can like 3D print some more skin out of your own cells. Uh, you know, they take a sample of your, your kidney and they can 3D print the whole kidney from just that sample. So they kind of take one little thing from your body and they kind of just, you know, use that to build a whole organ. And this is kind of like what God did, taking the rib, taking that DNA, taking all that information, building the woman from that rib. And he waked Adam out of his sleep. Again, just like how Yeshua, Jesus, was woken up, resurrected from the dead in the grave. And on awakening, he rose on the sixth day. Now, sleep and death are synonymous in the, in the scriptures. Awaking from sleep and resurrection are also spoken of synonymously in the scriptures. So he, he rose up and he brought her to him and he knew her and said to her, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh and she shall be called my wife. Once again, when, he, when it says here, he knew her, this is talking about intimate sexual relations. Anytime it says he knew her in the scriptures, that's what it means. It means uh, intimacy between a man and a woman. So he knew her. And he said to her, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called my wife. Now, again, there's so many different theories surrounding the creation story and about the book of Genesis and such. And one of the theories is that the forbidden fruit of the garden was actually sex. No, it was not. According to this scripture, they, they had intimacy, sexual intimacy, before the fall, before this whole fruit deal, when it comes to the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So he said, she, she shall be called my wife because she was taken from her husband. Therefore shall a man and wife be one. And therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. In the first week was Adam created. That would be during the first seven years. And the rib, his wife, in the second week, he showed her unto him. And for this, for this reason, the commandment was given to keep, to keep in their defilement for a male seven days and for a female twice seven days, uh, 14 days. 
And after Adam had completed 40 days in the land where he had been created, we brought him in into the Garden of Eden to, to till and keep it. But his wife they brought in on the 80th day. And after this, she entered into the Garden of Eden. Okay, so right here where it talks about... Um, and for this reason, the commandment was given to keep in their defilement for male seven days and for female uh, twice seven days. This is talking about the Torah. This is talking about what is written in the, uh, the law that was given through Moses. So we'll get to that later when we actually read that commandment later on in the Torah. And after Adam had completed 40 days in the land when, uh, where he had been created, we brought him into the Garden of Eden to till and to keep it. So Adam lived 40 days in the land before he came into the Garden of Eden. So you think, well, how did he eat? What did he eat? Well, maybe he didn't eat. Maybe this is the fast, the 40-day fast. Maybe this was the first 40-day fast before Moshe, Moses' 40-day fast, before Yeshua, Yeshua Jesus' 40-day fast. Maybe this was the first 40-day fast. And after Adam had completed his 40 days in the land which he had been created, we, uh, we brought him into the Garden of Eden. We being the angels brought him in the Garden of Eden. It's, isn't this interesting? It's awesome. To till and to keep it. But his wife they brought in on the 80th day. Okay, they waited double that for, for Eve to come in. And after this, she entered into the Garden of Eden. And for this reason, the commandment, again, where it talks about, when it says the commandment, it's talking about the commandment that we will read later on in the Torah, the commandment that Moshe gave to the children of Israel, is written on the heavenly tablets, okay? The heavenly tablets. Uh, this is the tablets from heaven, or the tablets in heaven, in regard to her that gives birth, if she bears a male... She shall remain in her uncleanness seven days according to the first week of, of days, and 33 days shall she remain in the blood of her purifying, and she shall not touch any hollow thing, nor enter into the sanctuary until she accomplishes, accomplishes these days, which are enjoined in the case of a male, male child. But in the case of a female child, she shall remain in her uncleanness two weeks of days, in accord, uh, according to the first two weeks and 66 days in, in the blood of her purification. And they will be in all 80 days. So it really breaks it down here, doesn't it? It really tells you why it was commanded specifically, you know, by Moshe or through Moses, uh, that uh, when a woman gives birth to a male child, She's, you know, she's in this state of purification for 40 days. When she gives birth to a female child, it's 80 days. So it's not just numbers they pulled out of a hat. It says very specifically here, it was numbers that came, you know, basically based upon the whole creation story and the whole thing between Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden. And when she had completed these 80 days, we brought her into the Garden of Eden, for it is holier than all the earth besides and every tree that is planted in it is holy so even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a holy tree it's not a bad tree okay therefore there was ordained regarding her who bears a male or a female child the statute of those days that she should touch no hollowed thing nor enter into the sanctuary until these days for a male or female child are accomplished. So there we go again. It's an explanation of why and how these, um, th these regulations were set out in the law that we got from Moses. This is the law and the testimony which was written down for Israel in order that they should observe all the days. And in the first week of the first jubilee, that's the first seven days, 1 to 7 a.m. it says here. Adam and his wife were in the Garden of Eden for seven years, tilling and keeping it. And we gave him work. And we instructed him to do everything that is suitable for tillage. And he tilled the garden and was naked and knew it not and was not ashamed. And he protected the garden from the birds and the beasts and the cattle and gathered its fruit and and, and eat and put aside the residue for himself and for his wife, and put aside that which was being kept. Okay, so right there I'm going to stop there. It, this is amazing. I mean, this gives us a lot more detail 
of uh, exactly the timing of w exactly what happened when it comes to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So it really sheds a lot of light on this subject. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to tomorrow's reading and we're going to get into Genesis chapter 3 and we're also going to start off right here where we left off here and we're going to talk about the temptation. So until next time, thanks for watching.